between Wednesdays. Just trying to get by to the next fix, living between Wednesdays. Prefer the comics over the Netflix. Living between What's up, folks? I'm your host, Conrad, from Wednesday Night Reviews, and I'm joined today by Kieran Quinn, artist on Death Wish, the new comic coming out from Lesser Known Comics. Kieran, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so for the folks out there in YouTube land who have maybe never seen your face, heard your name, or ever seen any of your art, um, who is Kieran Quinn? Uh, I am Kieran Quinn. I am a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm an artist, uh, a general artist, but I'm also an illustrator, a uh, comic book artist, and um, yeah, I mean that's uh, that's the the basics of me. But Perfect. if you want, you want me to get into details or sure, yeah, wh whatever you want to share. <clears throat> well, uh, I I went to school at one point. Uh, a long time ago for art. Well, I went to school and then art just happened to be the major. Okay. So, because uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but everyone was like, hey, you're good at this kind of thing. So you should try that. Um, so I've uh, been doing art for a really long time and trying to make money at it. Not always making money at it, but uh, this is kind of like my big like step in hope, hoping that uh like i can make comic books like a real career career path you know yeah so. okay um then you know what um that kind of lends well into the next question which is um how did you get into art uh and comics specifically well i've always been a comic book reader uh and i've always kind of like fooled around drawing everything comic booky, like picking characters, drawing them. Like I've always loved doing like sequential art, okay. like using the same characters and, and trying them in like different storylines, um, but not really, I'm not much of a writer. So writing is like, I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, like I want like an action scene to take place, but like most people are like, they draw one thing and then they're like, ah, done, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay, that's great. But like, how do they get there? Or why are they there? Oh, okay. You know, like, uh, I don't know. I, he I see a lot of people that just want to do cover art and things like that. It's like, oh, all I want to do is draw a cool pose. You know, it's like, that's great. But is that, does that, I don't know. Like, why is the character there? Like, that's the question that happens in my head. So I think, okay, I want to, I want the little story. I don't need people sitting around in a room talking <laughs> about what's about to happen. I want to know, you know, I want this, this, you know, timeline. Uh, but that being said, I was never much of a cartoon guy. Like, okay. I liked watching cartoons, but drawing cartoons is like, like the next step of where I don't want to go. Like, <laughs> like okay, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to draw every little part. I want to draw like this cool pose that you can tell that it turns into that cool pose that turns into that one. Like. Four or five panels, I'm good. A hundred pages of me moving my head is not what I oh, strive yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that was kind of like what I, you know, the enjoyment of me reading comics was what made me want to draw comics. So, okay. And where did you start reading comics? Like, what was your your first comic? What was like the big thing that you were into? Uh, Those could be two separate things, by the way. I appreciate that. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I have always read X-Men. Okay. Um, it was, like, the thing that I started on when I was a kid. Because, like, growing up in the 90s, you had, uh, like, Chris Claremont and Jim Lee and, like, that whole crew, oh, yeah. um, you know, uh, 
um so like that's kind of what got me into it um and then i've but that being that i've always been a dc guy besides x-men so oh, okay so like i read all x-men and then if someone had me spider-man i was like oh okay like hand it off <laughs> yeah. like and then take the batman comic and be like yes i want to read this so i read uh, a lot of green arrow uh oh, cool. and yeah i mean that was uh what's his name that just passed it was my introduction oh. um uh, aaron nope adam adam oh my god now i feel horrible <laughs> Adams. His last name's Adams. Yes. What's his first name? Neil. Neil, Neil Adams. Thank you. So Neil Adams was like my introduction to like the DC stuff. So it was like Green Lantern, Green Arrow, crossover, and all that stuff. So I read tons of that when I was a kid. And I really I just like fell in love with the whole like DC comics and stuff. And I think it's kind of like the colorfulness of characters because like i i don't know i don't know like <clears throat> superman is like blue and red and yellow there's like this solid oh i have those crayons <laughs> you know what i mean oh okay yeah yeah so okay i can i can draw those characters uh, i mean i could draw a captain as well but Captain America is like, I don't know, more intricate or something. So yeah. when you get into like drawing them, you want to be able to draw your characters. It's like, okay, Green Lantern, Green Arrow. I have a green crayon. I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> so like, even as a little kid, it was like, oh, I want to, I want to like draw these kind of characters and get into that the way I did. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much where I started on that okay and then like you said you you've gone to school i'm assuming um university or or maybe it's college because you're in the states correct yeah i'm in I, li I currently live in brooklyn oh cool uh i've lived in brooklyn for uh, about 12 years oh wow uh and i went to i went to oneonta which is a suny school upstate mm. Uh, which I, I grew up upstate uh, about uh, an hour from there. So when going to college, one of my friends said, Hey, you want to go to Oneonta? And I was like, sure. Do they have an art program? <laughs> and he's like, he was like, yeah, probably. <laughs> so I just like, I went to school. I went, I went to college just thinking like, all right, like, every school has an art program like let's try it and it was really good it's not a school known for art or anything but every teacher because it's like a smaller school in my mind it's smaller i have no idea but it, like all the teachers were like very hands-on or like mm -hmm. like super easy to you know oh my office hours are blah 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 but if you need me call me or come into it like oh, cool. find me yeah so it was you know i mean I, I don't think everyone had cell phones at the time because i feel like i just had a flip phone okay yeah because not that days. self it's like i mean people had cell phones it's not like i was it's not you mean like one of these the, right 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 yeah, there yeah. was no smartphones per se 12 years ago i it mean was texting and and that's about it right right so yeah uh, either way it was easy to contact your your advisors or your teachers or whatever because it was so small and they kind of let you do whatever you want which was really great oh cool like like i i would just go into the labs or or whatever whenever i had a chance and and like use all the equipment they they were like you're paying for it use it like oh. Love figure it. out figure out what you want to do and i even even when i was done with a class it was like uh, like 
get the get your badge to uh, still give you access. So, oh, okay, yeah. I, you know, I'd go to the I'd go to the teacher. The teacher would give me like a, a slip that says I'm allowed to have access, so that I could use the, you know, the print lab or the the computer lab or whatever whatever it was. Just like just take full advantage of school because again you're paying for it you might as well use it absolutely so, yeah i love so, it that's so cool um yeah. th then i did want to ask um so you've i'm assuming you you've graduated um yep i have a and how, degree okay and how long was it from graduation day until i guess you started working on comics and what did you do sort of in between um <clears throat> well i uh, well, comics is recent, so uh, I've always done like my own issue. Um, like I've always been working on my own comics, even during college. <clears throat> excuse me. There was like friends handing me scripts and saying, "Here, draw this." So I would like take the time and I would draw, it and then we would kind of go over it and that was kind of my process of uh, learning how it worked. Um, so after I graduated, I, I graduated in 2010. Uh, and then after I graduated, maybe six months later, me and a, a group of friends moved down to the city. Um, and I was like, I'm going to be a comic book artist. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go. And then I, I moved down and I was uh, completely broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, everyone's like, oh, you're leaving the dream. And I said, yeah, the broke artist dream. Yeah, yeah. So that happened. And then, so I just kind of, I bartended. I did like a bunch of like little jobs here and there trying to figure out how to make money. I ended up with my, a, a, a current company that I work with. Oh, cool is 24 7 contracting it's we build office furniture and stuff oh, okay. uh like we well we install office furniture uh mm. desks and cubicles and stuff like that so i've been doing that for like 10 years and in between it's been uh do an art show or join a community that does art shows and do yeah. group stuff so i haven't until 2019 um 2019 my friend patrick came up to me and said well one of our friends an intermediary <laughs> who uh got like introduced us okay and was like he has a comic and you're an artist so you guys should you know put this together so 2019 is when i really kind of started on that like okay. oh there's an actual script and and uh, like a, a way of uh you know actually making money on this so that's how i met mark from oh, lesser okay. known yeah so, so we so Patrick had interviewed Mark for something and then pitched his comic. And then, uh, so Mark, Patrick and I like figured out like how we're going to join their company and start comics. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So we, we, Patrick, has his own he he took his stuff and was like i have a i have another idea so he moved on already like it's only you know it's only been a year or two or whatever but um so i'm still doing comics i'm still doing other comics with him but i'm but i love the idea of lesser known so i was like oh man mark came up with the death wish script and and that I was like, yeah, I want, I want this. I want to, I want to draw this. <laughs> Love so. it. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, I think that's a great transition. So let's talk about Death Wish. So I will, I'll make sure I put some images up of it. Um, but what the heck is Death Wish? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Death Wish is a racing comic loosely based in the 70s. Loosely? It's, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, I don't know. Um, I like to think of it as like a Mad Max style racing. Um, Mad Max style. Hmm, I don't know what the word is. It's. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> anarchy. <laughs> yeah, it's anarchy. It's it's goofy, it's over the top. Yes. It's a lot of fun. It's uh completely absurd and ridiculous. Like this could never happen in real life. Uh <laughs> definitely but, not. Right. Uh but it's like what we wish we could like people go to watch NASCAR because they're excited for one of those cars to flip over and explode. Yeah. Like that's, there's no way you're sitting through 125 circles around the track and you're not fingers crossed for something crazy to happen. Yeah. You know, this is, this is a comic that we want to explore that fun, you know? So True. yeah, we want characters to be absurd and ridiculous to each other and, shoot rockets and uh flamethrowers and drop grenades and whatever the spike strips and, and, absolutely um, yeah. yeah um i i think one of the first things that hit me um where i was like okay this is gonna be absolutely bonkers was on what is it, the four fifth page here um uh, where you've got uh, one of the drivers who's uh apparently russian uh, and he's like a monkey with a rocket strapped to his car. I love yeah. that. And it's like yeah. duct taped to the hood um, <laughs> or the, the, the roof. It's yep. fantastic. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's his, his, I don't know, secret weapon or something. He's going <laughs> to light it up and off he goes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what I, I really wanted to ask about, because I've read a lot of comics doing what I do, not only as just a big nerd myself um who just loves batman and, and all this stuff um but you know someone who promotes comics and, and wants to get the word out um i go through a lot whether it's indie whether it's mainstream um and when i read the, even just like the the first page of death wish um so you know beyond the cover when i actually saw the first page um, and I'll, again, I'll put it up, but basically the first page is just a big panel of a wood fence with a poster that says Sunday, 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 Badlands Demolition Race, parts in un or in parts unknown. Um, and at the bottom, it's, if you don't know where, you're not invited. Um, <laughs> and it's just two cars, like, going at it. And then under it, it's, um, we have a young lady walking by looking at a bunch of goons who are just, you know, young kids probably being idiots. Uh, and as we you know go to the next page, we've got people working on cars and you know jiving each other and trying to figure out who's who and what's what. And then basically right away race starts. Um, but what I think really caught my attention was the line work, the coloring, and the general composition of the comic. So I wanted to ask because um, I often know that sometimes writers have a lot of control on it. Sometimes they're very hands off. Um, when it came to how this comic actually looks, so when people read it, uh, how much of that was, was under your control and, and, you know, what, what was your level of input on the, the visuals? Um, <clears throat> well, with basic, oh, okay, okay. My whole idea behind comics is to keep a, a, a flow. Uh, I don't, in, uh, not that I don't like using boxes, but I'd like to keep like the reader kind of like, oh, look like this is like, keep them looking and, and interested in what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
that actually started as that that style i got kind of started on a long time ago going back to college one of my teachers mm -hmm. kept telling me stop drawing in squares and stop <laughs> stop lining everything up and i was like what do you mean it's nice and clean and crisp and they were like no just stop it and the one day <laughs> um the one day i was doing a like a screen print or uh or whatever and she came over and she looks and she just she just messed everything up like physically took my my wood blocks or whatever i was printing and like messed them all up and she said print that and tell me you don't like it and i said uh, okay so then i printed it and i said that's way better that's not <laughs> what i was thinking but that's way better so when I started like illustrating comics, I said, forget the, forget the boxes, just use what's already there to tell the story. So if there's smoke, like have it split the, the scene. Like if there's, uh, you know, whatever it is, like try to try to use what's in the story to tell the story. Um, so, I think the first, when I first, our first comic was a comic called Conjury, mm -hmm. which we're still doing with uh, um, the other company. But is that with Pat or is he? Yeah, that's with Patrick. Okay. So that's the first time Mark had seen my work. And I think that's the style he liked because when he showed me the script for, for death wish he was like this this is all you like you can take it and play with it oh cool um, yeah so you so, just got to go and do whatever yeah so i mean his script is so basic and even for like the future script he's given me so much play you know he's like make it like this is what needs to happen but here's like bullet points and I'll kind of fill it in. Like there's a script, but like sometimes it just says like, and then a car explodes. <laughs> yeah. So that, so then you're like, that's, oh, I have three pages of racing and explosions, but it needs to end X, you know, and it needs okay, to end so over here. Get, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So he's like, have fun, enjoy it. You know, it's not that I'm, it's he is writing it but he's giving me all the freedom that i could want as an artist oh which is yeah. so good well you know what i i have to say absolutely everything that's culminated to you working on death wish i'm very glad it's happened the way it's happened um and that mark is letting you just do you um yeah because one thing when i was going through it that just kept coming to my brain was like this reminds me of heavy heavy metal magazine like the the zaniness, the um, not looseness with your line work. I, I'm, I have a page up. I'll put it up so people can see it. Mm. Um, but it's the eighth page in the book um, where it's just this cacophony of cars and people are swinging bats at each other. And, you know, it's, it's wild. Um, so there's so much chaos going on in it. And yet in all of that destruction and, and wildness... You have so perfectly taken that smoke line from, I think, one of the first cars, and the way it's designed, it actually just highlights a car jumping, a, two guys basically having a fight mid-road, and then some sort of box with a bunch of chainsaws on it, and then this person at the very foreground with, like, a grenade, and it was impressive as hell, <laughs> because in, like, a DC book, like have one on me like that would be drawn panel 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 or maybe like a big panel with a character overlapping right but like you said use what's in the scene and you've done that so well oh. um even in earlier scenes there's a, a part where a flamethrower goes off and you've shown six separate characters inside profile but by using the flame that's coming from the top panel 
to ignite basically the the line work you're able to show that and it was just like damn that's like that's solid composition <laughs> um so i guess like clearly you'd like to have fun with art and what i wanted to ask was then how has i guess i guess maybe you kind of told us already but how has all of the previous experience you've had played into your your way of making comics um and i guess more specifically i'll, I'll ask if someone goes and cruises your website, um, which I have the link for in one of these, um, I'll put the link up on the screen here. Um, but if someone goes into your website, you have acrylics, you've got tattoo work where I believe you've designed tattoos, you've got oh, yeah. sculpture, photography, like you, you've done it all basically. I, I don't yeah. think there's anything missing in the world. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first muppet <laughs> <laughs> wow i was like oh like another thing i could try let's let's try making muppets i've never done it yeah i can do this <laughs> that's really good wow <laughs> so, so i'm so yeah so how has all of that sort of maybe helped inform how you make comics um oh that's a tough uh i mean every little thing that i work on is like uh, i mean everything gives you new perspective so even just reading comic books like you'll see something and you're like, oh, this is how this person draws it. And sometimes I'm like, well, I remember doing, you know, a sculpture. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I know how like that form works. Like, oh, I sculpted a dog or I sculpted a person or whatever it was like you understand the th three-dimensional aspect of something better when you've like physically done it rather yeah. than just like, you know, looking at so, a book or something. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like a way of kind of understanding that, you know, like a weight of something like, Oh, something can't just stand it, it, like it needs a reason to work yeah right so a lot of a lot of times it's like oh there has to be some reality in it which helps with all the other stuff i've done so you're this is your that second published comic correct uh yes yeah yeah okay so i i currently have more because of uh the other company which is called legacy comics okay with an, comics with an x um, so there is more, but yeah, basically this is my second published comic that, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So the, the reason I ask is you have a, a super, well, I guess polished might not be the right word for your art, but your, 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 your composition is extremely tight. Um, and that's rare, seeing that in someone who's made so few comics. Um, and that's why I think I, I'm I'm definitely interested in your your education and your experience beyond your education. Because um, I know on your site you list that you've been in quite a few events, um, whether they're comic cons, art shows. Um, like you've definitely got yourself out there. You've you've done a lot. We've seen a Muppet head. Um, <laughs> it, so it's interesting to see when we have an artist or I get to speak with an artist who is so varied. Um, my partner actually, um, she, she has her, her BA in fine art. Then she got her BA in education and then she got her MFA in, uh, intermediate or not mixed media. It, it escapes me currently. Um, so 
like seeing your your background there with like your collection of stuff and all the stuff you're working <laughs> on you've got you know woodwork and stuff going on back there i'm like yeah. oh yeah that's an artist right there <laughs> like i right away i'm like uh artist um because that that kind of chaos well not chaos though it's no it's, it's, it's you it's, know what's there you know where it is it's just, uh, organized chaos yeah yeah well organized in my mind i know where everything is i know yeah, what exactly. everything is and that's what counts yeah. And it comes through very well on the page of Death Wish. Um, so I, I did want to ask actually about the comic. So this is like a mini um, that people could get through a Kickstarter, correct? Yes. Uh, the Kickstarter is coming up. Yes. The Kickstarter is still in pre-launch, but it will be up. Oh, okay. It'll be up next week or the week after or something and Beautiful. Okay. yeah based on whenever you uh launched this video ah, okay <laughs> like, you know it could still like i think it should be up by then so okay um well then i will make sure there are links to it um so this comic itself from start to finish it's about 10 pages and then there's um, in the, the packet that I got, there's some promotional stuff and, and you know, clues about what's going on later. Um, I, I'm very curious, how many, as of now, if you can say it, if you can't, don't get yourself in trouble, um, how many issues is this planned for? Um, or, or how many issues exist, I should say? I, I don't know what I can say. Well, okay, I, I know I can say a few things. Okay. Um, based on the initial conversation between Mark and I, I think there's eight issues. And uh, I know the story arc. I know half of the story arc. Okay. <laughs> you know, I know where the arc starts. Um, but I don't know, like, he hasn't written the whole thing yet. Yeah. So, 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 so far, we have that first issue which is yeah like you said just a preview but it's 10 pages and kind of leaves you on a little cliffhanger to be like wait what like what's going on um and then the next issue is like a full 24 page issue where you get you know all the you know the next part of the story so right now there's only one other issue um yeah there's only one other issue so far we're, we're hoping to continue going. I think there's, you know, we need people to donate and all that kind of thing yeah. so that, well, like if people show us interest, then we can say, okay, it's worth continuing. Yeah, I, so absolutely. far, everyone loves it. So I, I don't see why not. But Yeah, I uh, can see why they love it. <laughs> um, okay, so if all goes well, if the Kickstarter launch on this one goes well probably the next one will get made and so on um so ideally currently there's say eight issues which is awesome um and i did want to ask do you do all of the art do you do the coloring as well or is there someone else yeah. who works on it no there's no one else i do pencils and inks oh okay and then i watercolor it so yeah, so that's what gives it that different kind of look. So the pencils and inks are done. Let's see. We just grab a sheet of paper. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, okay. So here's just a penciled page of art. So like 11 by 17. Wow. Um, so a little, little sneak preview. Uh, <laughs> yeah so um it's 11 by 17 i do everything in pencil and then i immediately go over the pencil with ink i don't i don't uh trace i don't do like a separate pass of tracing i just because a lot of times some of the art is just like uh, like i'll just draw a circle like oh that's a person's head oh okay you know, uh, like pages, certain pages where I want to know exactly all the detail, just like the page I just showed. 
uh, will have all the lines pretty much. Um, there's probably like more characters and backgrounds and stuff that I'll put in. Um, but for the most part, I don't waste my time doing a lot of pencil because I'm like, oh, I know where those lines go. I just do it when I do the ink. Oh, interesting. You know, so I know that there's people that use a light board and they'll trace, you know, and then they'll make their make their changes and stuff. And sometimes, you know, oh, if I screw it up completely, yeah, you know, <laughs> but um, but once it's inked, then then I photocopy it so oh, that okay. I have so then so then I like then I'm on to watercolor. And then I have a different, so not always a different kind of paper. Sometimes it just goes right onto this, but then my lines are solidified and I can just mess with the color as much as I want. And if I screw that up, I can make another photocopy and start again. I mean, that's handy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's not on, it's not on regular paper, you know, it's on like a nice paper that will hold the, the hold the color. Yeah. So it's, it's a heavy, um, it's just, I know it's a special kind of, I'm imagining it's a special kind of watercolor paper probably. Um, yes, but it's not like overly expensive. Like, it's not like, it's not the greatest watercolor paper, but it's like, it does the job. Like if it works and it comes out looking like your art does, that works. Yeah. And like, if I have to color correct after everything's scanned, because sometimes it's like, oh, there's the. That blue is the blue I was painting with is non photo blue. So, oh, like, it doesn't even show up, and you're like, what, what was I thinking? Like, why did I use that color? <laughs> and like, grays and pur gray or purples become gray and different things. Oh, on. weird. Yeah, it's, it's the scanning process is very strange. So, a lot of times it's like, oh, you got to click some buttons on the computer to fix that. Um, usually it's just heighten the. The, the hue or whatever the hue or yeah you just kind of like oh i'll just move that slider up until it's yeah. the same as what's on my paper and boom you're good freaky so. and <laughs> so do you do all that as well like do you do the digital correcting once it's scanned yeah yeah wow yeah so it's a it's a long process but it's it's a lot it's not necessarily well it's long yeah i guess that makes sense um it's it's because it's just like oh it's a lot but that's why that's the other reason why you know i kind of skip through pencils it's like like why waste my time doing something that i know i can fix later and yeah. or or you know ignore until why put off what is it? why put off now or why do now if i can put it off till tomorrow but, <laughs> uh but uh, like yeah, so you get every, like everything eventually gets done. Whether it's like, oh, I, oh, I, there should have been a line there. Well, I can put it in after after everything's watercolored anyway. You can always go back and add hmm. things, and it's all physically done. I, I can't do computer art. I mean, it can, it's just total pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it, I, I think that process, your process that you take, though, it, it also it gives your art a very unique style. Um, like, I have a feeling from now on, if ever I pick up a comic and your art is in it, I will go, oh, well, that's Kieran. Um, <laughs> because, like, you have, I think that's what it was getting me, because your colors at times are very pastel and they're layered um especially because of how that watercolor works inherently and it absorbs in the papers in certain ways um but your lines are actually inked and in, in black um so when they're pronounced it's like whoa there you go there's your shapes um and that co that combination is really cool um so it, it's interesting to see and into to see an artist work in both um because like famously um uh, Dustin Nguyen works in watercolor, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Fantastic oh, I, art. I love his stuff. It's unbelievable. Yeah, but there's yeah. no like hard line to it. And then right. folks like, I don't know, Mike Mignola, 
who works in these really deep, heavy inks. Um, so you know, good. So yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but it's cool to be able to see that kind of fusion in your work. Um, it's just it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I spend all this time. Okay. Every time I draw something and uh, like I set it down and I'm like, man, I really like that. And then I go and I look at Magnola or Nian or whoever, and I go, oh, I wish I, I wish I left off the lines or I wish I did more ink or whatever, because I look at theirs and I'm like, oh man, it's so good. It's it, like, I love that style. And then people turn and they say what you said and, and I'm going, okay, I, I don't have to change, <laughs> yeah. but it's hard not to want to. Yeah. But yeah, it's hard not to want to do that. But it's also like when you're not watching anything else it, or looking at anyone else's art or comparing yourself to anyone, like there's so much satisfaction in seeing that finished page and being like, yes, I really enjoy what I've done. So yeah, it makes, it makes sense. Like yeah. that's my style. Uh, I never think of it that way, but that works. <laughs> Uh, then you know what? Let me ask you another kind of uh, a question that I, I like to ask folks that might get your brain to work or to, to stretch in sort of a similar way, which is, um, given you've you've got your previous work with Pat, um, you've got now Death Wish at Lesser Known, and who knows what comes in the future? I, I hope lots. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> have you at this point started thinking of yourself as? kieran quinn comic artist or are you still kieran quinn guy who does comics oh well the first time i saw the comic printed and i held it in my hand i was like holy crap i'm a comic book artist <laughs> but i don't know i don't have that I don't think I have the full satisfaction until I walk into a comic book store mm. and then just be like, Oh, that's mine. And no one here understand, like no one here knows that either they either know that it's mine or they have no idea. And it's just like a secret between me and the shelf. You know, it's like, yep, that's mine. And no one else know because artists don't usually, you don't see people's faces. Yeah. You know? unless you're super famous, you know, and I don't really have, I just want to have my art up there on the shelf and people reading it and enjoying it. And, you know, it's not about me. It's about, you know, that the thing on the, yep. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think coming back, I think I don't always feel like I am Kieran Quinn comic book artist. I feel like, Kieran Quinn, that guy that does way too much art <laughs> and comic books is one of them, you know? Okay. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, and like, as you saw, like I'm working on something else. I, I have to do so many things all at once because that's kind of how my brain works. It's like, oh, I'll sit and I'll draw 12 pages of comics and then I'll turn around and be like, now it's time to make a puppet, you know, <laughs> or a cosplay or whatever. Cause I do that too. Like, like in the back here, that's a Batman outfit. I, um, I was going to ask. Yeah. That's a uh, Hazel and from Hazel and Cha-Cha. Okay. Uh, in uh, Umbrella Academy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that thing's like 10 years old, but yeah. I mean, that's, that's my fiance's, uh, uh, jacket there um black canary black canary so i made the patch for that and oh, you know so i have like a you know sewing machine i any any type of art i can try or figure yeah. out you know and then again it comes to digital and i'm like i'm an idiot i don't know how this works you know i i it, it deep down in my heart of hearts i have a feeling that 
well, I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule and there's artists who can do digital and analog without issue. I feel like the folks like yourself who, who do analog, who do pen and ink, sewing machines, lumber, whatever. Oh, yeah. There's something, I think, anyway, the way your brain works, it's very tactile and hands-on. You want to touch the thing. And then I think the folks who can do digital art, um, like Stefan Sedgwick always comes to mind for me for digital art as like the pinnacle right now. I feel like his brain must work in such a way that he, he doesn't need it. He's just like this. I just visualize and it just, it's there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's super cool. Just the, the way different people work. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I have total respect for anyone that can paint without feeling paint. Yeah, like, uh, I just feel like if I, if there's no dirt under my nails, I haven't done the work. That's just in my brain, you know. I, yeah. I, I did a I did a piece of art for my my contracting company. Okay. Um, that my boss had hired me to do, and it was basically like all these people in my company as superheroes oh cool yeah and it, but it was a six foot by four foot canvas wow now i was like i would like to do this with real pen and uh, real paintbrush well he's like can you get it done by the christmas party and i said no <laughs> <laughs> so so it ended up hold up is it right here hold up uh, I don't think I know where it is, but I did it. I did a half size. I did uh, three by two, and I did everything uh, like penciled and then inked it. So I drew everyone oh. in my company as superheroes coming out of our company logo cool and then i scanned that and blew it up and you know so genius yeah so then it was like oh just print off a six by whatever and it came out really well and now they can make as many copies as they want or whatever they want to do with it yeah which is which is the cool thing about digital you know it's yeah. repeatable but not with you know, not with, if I had just done one painting, they would have been like, okay, how do we scan it? I'd be like, I don't know. Good <laughs> like, luck. <laughs> yeah. If find someone to do that for you, I, I can't help you. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that even in your professional life, it sounds like you get to be fairly creative, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I've gotten lucky. Well, uh, I don't know if I, luck is the word. Uh, I worked my, uh, like, I worked like crazy for like seven years, like 70 hour work weeks, just like always saying yes to whatever I could do, you know, working my way up in this company so that I could, you know, make the money and do what I wanted. And so I kind of like backed myself into a corner in a way where like, I'm the only guy at my job that knows how to do my job. So oh. I'm absolutely needed, but I've also made it. So I only have to work two days a week. So Monday, Tuesdays I work. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if I have time and Sunday, if I have time, I do art. So it's like, yeah, I, I get, <laughs> do whatever I, you know, I get to play. But it took me seven years of building myself up in a company and working way too much to get to where I am. So, I mean, you know what though? It, it good for you, like to flat out just amazing. Because if you get to spend just two days a week working doing the the building i'm assuming the physical the yeah, yeah. yeah the physical labor yeah and then the rest of it's just kieran doing art 
Like yeah. it sounds like you're nearly oh, there, right? And like, answering you... emails and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that'll oh, always that just... happen though. Yeah, yeah. Um folks like me or folks like, you know, who want you to go build something will always want to reach out to you. <laughs> um but that's amazing. Um and I I hope very soon from now that that two day work week gets to turn into a zero day building work week and Karen can just be an artist. Um, Cause you're like on the cusp of making it. So to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people think of it a lot of different ways, but like, you're like right there. <sighs> um, so keep pushing, please, Karen. Oh, I will. And uh, I'm so, I'm so lucky to have uh, Hannah, my fiance. She pushes me every day. She always tells me, you know, like you need to be doing this full time. Like, there's no reason why you're not. And I'm always just like, but uh, the company needs me. <laughs> and she's like, no, they don't. They can do without you. You can train someone else, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. It, it will take time, but I will do it. And uh, uh, I'm very excited about, like, the future. Uh, because I guess you don't realize... Like, I've never thought of myself as, like, that great artist, you know? Yeah. Like, I've just been like, yeah, I, I like to draw. I, that's something I enjoy doing. So I'm like, I, if I don't get paid for it, no problem. And everyone's like, no, you need to get paid. You get paid for your work. Yeah. Stop letting people walk all over you. And I'm like, I'm not letting anyone do anything. I'm just I'm just happy to be doing it. Uh, that's just the attitude I have. I don't know. Mm. So she's like, no, you need to make money doing your art. You need to be selling it. Get, you know, get, get, get going. I'm like, okay. Like, I'm glad you're here because otherwise every single piece of art I do would always be for free and people would just get upset no. with me for wasting, you know, wasting my talent or whatever you want to call it. 100% what you're definitely talented. You've clearly put in the work. Uh, and it was Hannah, correct? That's your fiance's name? Yeah, Hannah Love. Hannah Great Love, list. thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, I do want to make sure folks get all the information they need because I want them to support you. Um, so again, the the book is called Death Wish. Um, I will put the cover up. Um, we've sort of touched on earlier, it, there's going to be a Kickstarter. Um, we're not 100% sure on the date as of yet. Is that correct? I, I have. Uh, hold on. And can you say it again? Don't get yourself in trouble. The kick. Well, they're already. Mark has already said, "Hey, you know, send the send the link out for the oh, perfect for the pre." It's just that I um. Uh, but I don't always make my meetings because. <laughs> so I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. So, Mark. The meetings I have with LKC are on Tuesdays, which is okay. the day, one of the days I work. <laughs> so it's like, I not, I don't have a, I can't use my phone all the time. I can't always be there. <laughs> I try to get on. It's just, you know, one of those things where, you know, I'm supposed to be on the, for the phone call meeting, but I'm not there. So uh, let me just see. Is it, okay, question. Is it in batch two or batch three? Um, oh, three. Good. Is e three? Yeah, because two is digital lizards. And batch one was like the first one that we had done. Hold on. Oh, wait. I, I know where it is. Hold on. Condry. Oh, okay. So Condry's actually in there too. Perfect. Yeah. So Condry was like the the original comic that got us and got me involved mm -hmm. uh, with Lesser Note. And then, as I said, Patrick was like, "Hey, we're gonna take this." And we're going to run with it somewhere else. Uh, we're starting a new company called Le 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 Legacy. I always want to say legendary, and I know that's not right. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. 
and he's like, well, you're going to continue drawing my comic, right? And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, yeah. like, I'll keep going. But yeah, so, and then it was like, but I want to do this comic, so I'm sticking with LKC. They, you know, they're they're on me, and, I, and I'm on them, like, I don't know, sticky stuff, other sticky stuff. <laughs> Love it. Um, where is the... I have it in here. No, I have no idea. <laughs> it's okay. You you can give it to me afterward, and we will make sure we put links down below. Yeah. Um, but they'll be able to support you on Kickstarter to get their hands on uh, Death Wish number one in one of the lesser known batches. Um, what I always like to ask is, how else can they support you? Um, whether it's it's through comics or it's through another means, if you have other content out there, um, if someone wanted to support you, Kieran, what would be their go-to way right now? Uh, just follow me on Instagram, KX Quinn, at KX Quinn. Um, yeah, I don't have like a Patreon or anything yet. I also, I mean, I do do commissions. Um, oh, like. If someone reaches out and asks but uh i don't actively ask for commissions because sometimes i'm just like oh I'm, I'm super busy and you won't see that for a year and i don't want to destroy your hopes of having you know something that you want right away you know mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes people are like hey i'm getting it ta- i want to get a tattoo can you do it for me this weekend and it's like uh how detailed because I have like three hours I can fit that in, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, so some things like that happen, uh, but you can, again, on my Instagram, just like direct message or, or um, yeah, that's probably the best way. It's what I check the most often. Perfect. Uh, but just say why you're, and why you're sending me a message other other than that like because sometimes it's like spam and i just like yep. delete it and i don't check it and i've had people be like you've deleted my thing like three times and i'm like sorry it looked like spam <laughs> like your your yep. picture is like a person with their you know yeah i'm like yep. I, you, i'm assuming you're spam i, I apologize <laughs> so yeah it's just one of those things. Um, KX, at KX Quinn on Instagram. Oh, at KX Quinn sketchbook for art related. Both okay. are open. Both are open to the public. But one, you'll see more of me and Hannah and family fun stuff. And one, you'll see more art. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the sketchbook is relatively new. But I'm also terrible at posting. <laughs> so I every day I say, oh, I need to post this. And then I never do. So <laughs> just, I'm just not good at it. And I, I need it's a skill. Yeah, I need someone to kind of I would love it if someone did it for me, like walked in and took a picture of my art and said, there you go. Done. It takes me like 20 minutes to figure out like, oh, what's the hashtag? Pencil. Hashtag (laughs) comic book artist. Like, you know, all these things that I, people are like, oh, just put it in a note and then copy and paste. I'm like, I I don't even remember to check my notes. So that's not going to happen either. Yeah. So I I, I know that exact feeling. Uh, I am... (laughs) horrible at posting uh i want to be better i am actively working at it but you're right um you know what maybe just grab your your fiance's phone grab hannah's phone and just log into yours on her instagram and she'll be like randomly come in take pictures of stuff and do it yeah yeah (laughs) she's like i'll be your manager and i'm like hey if you can make me money (laughs) yeah let's do this go for it yeah i i I really think that's the only way it's gonna happen (laughs) so (laughs) I love it. Um, awesome. So in, in that case, you know what? We've pretty much gone through the, the gambit of, of questions. We've talked a lot. So, not, so wow, words. We've talked a lot so far tonight. Um, 
I actually have three last questions for you. So uh, my, my extra bonus one, I guess, will be um, oftentimes, as we've discussed, you yourself read comics, you collect comics, um, you've got cosplay stuff behind you. Um, mm-hmm. If someone came to you and was like, what is the thing in your collection that sums it all up would be the, the masterpiece or the, the face piece for your collection? What would it be? Whether it's something you've made, bought, inherited, picked up, gift, whatever. What's oh, like, man. what's that thing that's just like the cool thing? Oh, dang. I mean, I just think I have, I mean, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I have a lot of cool stuff, but that's like cool to me, not necessarily cool to anyone else. No, 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 that, that's cool stuff. Like, uh, you know, it could just be like, no, oh, hold on a sec. Okay, yeah. Okay. A little bit of show and tell time. I love it. I'm not going to put this on, but uh, this Batman cowl. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I I think it's one of my favorite things I've ever made. It's it's real leather. Wow. Uh, it's got like the goggle built in. I mean, everything's just sewn together, but then I got to put some Velcro on there. Uh, I think it's like one of the things that I just enjoy wearing. Uh, it, it's the comic, um, it's the, if you look at, uh, DC bombshells. There's a picture of Batman holding Catwoman. Yep. So that was one of our cosplays one year. And oh, so cool. I was like, I can I can make these. I can make I can build this this mask and everything. Like it's like a pair of gray cargo pants with a belt. Like it's yeah. really great. I can it's simple enough that I know I can do it and make it look as good as possible. And I think that this is one of like the things I'm most proud of like building and also because it's Batman, it's like people recognize it and say, Oh "Oh, yeah, yeah. I like, I like that version. I like, I like what you did there. That's super cool. Yeah. Wow. That that would be my, my biggest nerd uh, thing that I have. I think that's amazing. (laughs) Um, Wow. I mean, I'm also not surprised somehow just because of everything <laughs> that you've made. I'm like, yeah, no, that makes sense. But like, yeah. wow. <laughs> um, cool. So you know what? That's like the thing in the collection. Um, so yeah. what are you reading currently? Whether it's comics or just regular books, what's got your brain working? Uh, I'm reading a book series called Red Rising. It's One of the covers has a wing on it, right? Yes. Yes. I think. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, it's a, uh, last, last name is Brown. I forgot what his name is. Okay. So, something Brown. Um, it's a sci-fi. It's really intricate and really interesting. And all the characters are like color coded. Like it's a future where everyone, like, if you think racism is bad right now, or whatever like in human history like characters in this future are like oh i am physically colored red i'm physically colored blue oh i am black i am white i am all these in-betweens so it's a sci-fi epic about like kind of changing the color of your skin to become something else uh it's a really it's kind of a fun read um it's a like five book series you kind of forget color wise <laughs> like the, it's like the main focus in the first book and then it's like oh yeah these people are colorful creatures <laughs> okay uh, so I, I i if it ever got adapted into a movie i think it would have to be completely like a digital wonderland kind of thing it, i don't know how else it would work but it's like earth and mars and venus and like different people live oh. in different places and 
people don't know that there's like a world beyond and they don't know i don't know it's a it's an interesting book um or series anyway that's not as important as comic books <laughs> i mean you know what if it's keeping your brain happy though that's good because i, I always yeah. to ask because there's one thing to talk about, you know, what you're working on and stuff and what you're passionate about. Um, but I find that there's a certain perspective you can gain by enjoying something that someone else is enjoying, right? Like if, if I now want to get a little bit anyway into your brain, if I go read these books, I'll see at least something that scratches your brain the way that's like, this thing is cool. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So that's what I like to ask, right? Because it's like, what is this creator? What is this artist? What is this writer? What do they enjoy? You yeah, know, you get their perspective. So that's why I like to ask that question. Yeah, I mean, books, I, I really like reading books because it makes you do the work. Yeah. Um, reading comics, it's like everything's laid out, which is really nice. You don't have to picture anything because it's pictured. Uh, but there's like a, a totally different part of your brain that says, oh, I get to build a city. I get to uh, put a face to something and that's kind of why like when you watch a movie after you've read the book you're like eh, that's not i didn't see yeah. it that way like you're always disappointed because yeah you didn't you know you didn't picture it that way so it makes it easier with comic books and things you know um comic book wise i'm reading old stuff um uh, hellblazer nice so like there's like I don't know 19 of these volumes, and wow. I I'm on 12, <laughs> so like that's the the artists throughout these series is are really interesting too because it it's horror, and you get a lot of like weird weird stuff which makes my brain say oh I could draw it that way or I could <laughs> I could I could take that in a similar direction, which I really like. So I think that's really all I'm reading. Nothing new. Oh, um, uh, maybe anything by Sean Murphy. I'm reading. He's fantastic. Uh, Tokyo Ghost. Yeah, unfreaking believable. Um, just like knows what he's doing, and he's he's a physical artist too. He does everything, you know, like with real pen and ink which is really nice. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, you know what? My last question, um, my, sometimes people think it's the easiest one. Sometimes they think it's not. Um, what do you want your fans to know? What do I want my fans to know? Um, I want them to know. I want them to know. <laughs> Keep Keep your eye out for um, not just myself, but like a lot of upcoming artists. Um, Cause there's like a lot of really great people in, in LKC and, and even the other company I'm working with, like there's just like a lot of people that are, you know, trying to put their art out there and not everyone can be, you know, Marvel or DC. That's yep. like, yeah you got big names but they're very specific in how they work like there's so much more out there there's like uh, every artist has their own way of you know showing their stuff so you know keep your eyes open <laughs> i love it i absolutely love it well thank you very much thank um, you so much yeah yeah uh yeah, like, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight, Kieran. Um, it honestly was a, a joy to have you. Uh, yeah, this I can't was great. Wait for more. <laughs> yeah. Thank you uh, so much. I'm sorry. I keep interrupting. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of like uh, wired now, a little, a little awake. So. It's all good. Uh, and for the folks out there in YouTube land, absolutely. Thanks for tuning in. Go check out all the links down below so you can see Kieran's work. Um, check out Death Wish uh, and. Well, everything else from Lesser Known Comics as it comes out, uh, and we'll catch you next time. Golden age to present, digest to oversize, never miss new comic day. Yeah, no surprise, so where's my no prize? Check the letter columns, can't find issue two. Yeah. 
collector problems, cliffhangers, mysteries, you need answers. When did Batman become Green Lantern? I get it, true believer, not lying, always up for an awesome summer crossover tie-in.